house alive. Gonna set the whole goddamn place on fire. All right, Tuesday night talk here on Caribou Heart TV, and we've got Mike from Ozark Nation Genetics joining us for round two. It was so good the first time, we had to bring it back for the deuce. How you doing, brother? Pretty good. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. Awesome. Glad to have you here. It's going to be a hell of a conversation tonight, I think. We're going to have some good fun here. So cool. So let's might as well get to the important stuff. Everyone wants to know, if, uh, what are you smoking on tonight? Uh, I'm smoking on some lemon lime that uh, my homie out in 420 Nomad 707 grew. Uh, he's been growing. He, he made that plant and uh, made the seeds and hunted them and found that plant and been growing it for a couple of years, winning some cups with the extract and stuff like that. And he oh, sent yeah. flower, and so I've been smoking on that while I'm trying to get to my next harvest, which is a few days into drying. So we're getting there. Yeah, I hear how that one works. I was just thinking about how that uh, earlier today, last night. Like, are we going to hit that lull in the gaps between our harvests where we might have to get a hold of someone to help us out? And it's, we'll see. It's still up in the air on uh, whether we do or not. Yeah, it happens a lot to me. I'm making a lot of food. Uh, smoking feedy bud. Yeah. Uh. Hey, Caribou, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sidetrack this one just real fucking quick. Oh, shit. Already? Terp wanted to say hi. He's in chat under the name Kevin right now. So he wanted to let you know he is here. He is out of jail, everybody. He is saying hi. What's up? What's good, my friend? Here's so, Terp. Sorry. My, my buddy here. just got out of jail today, man. So we're all excited for him. That's a dab. That's a dab froggable thing right there. I do. Well, that's dab froggable right there. Let's do it. Anytime one of our buddies gets out of jail, we'll do a dab for him. But anytime our buddy gets out of jail for the crime of growing a fucking plant, uh, that's some horseshit right there. So, Turt, brother, this dab's for you, my man. You. We're definitely dabbing that shit. Well, that's great to hear. All right. So, what do you got hanging, man? You got that Nepalese hanging right now? Is that, is that what's next on the fucking drying line? He hasn't down yet. Uh, right now, I've just got some sea lion pie. Uh, and then, uh, what else did I take down? Uh, I'm drawing a blank there for a second. Oh, I took down some watermelon Skittles. And then, a uh, cut called Eliminati from, uh, I forget who the company is that made it. But it's like gelonade crossed to go to go or something like that. Haven't, haven't smoked it yet, so we'll, we'll see. Jury's out on that one. Jury's out, Todd. She at least made the made the uh, cut to get uh, to make it to the smoke, though, huh? Yeah, it's a nice it's a nice plant for vegging for sure. So we'll see how the how the smoke goes. Yeah, it's that that those profiles aren't always my my favorite thing, but I always want to try some fun lemon stuff and see what's out there. And, and you said just lemon generally isn't your profile. Now is that like the okay. uh, any? What's up? Like the gelinade and dosi dough and stuff like that's not really. I like lemon stuff. I definitely like the hunt some lemon. Yeah, right. It's like that spectrum of lemon, right? Like I don't specifically like that. Uh, what I think of is that sativa powdery fake lemon. But if you give me like a lemon cleaner or like a lemon pine saw, that's all day for me. Yeah. That's all day and then so. So all lemon, but uh, no, no lemon jack. I kind of, kind of. Yeah. Every now and then I can do some like good train wreck but i grew that for a long time that pack a punch that gba grew out recently that had some kick to it like that was like you could smell like lemon like actual lemon lemon like not not uh the fake lemons like the powdery gatorade type stuff that uh yeah. fluff was just talking about there it was like damn that's good and then you go to smoke it and it's just like wicked potent on top of that and you're just like I'm not usually a lemon guy. Uh, it's like a kind of certain stuff. I find that some of it will be just way too racy, but I was like, fuck, this is just like checking the box is nice. Yeah. yeah. Last nugget. Hold on, dude. It's been floating around in his jar by itself for like a week now. Man. <laughs> you ever do that where you get like that one last little bit? Like here's a good example. The sloth lettuce we have, there's enough for like a nice size joint. <laughs> By, but it's been in this jar with all that air in there for about two weeks. So by the time I go to get that, that's going to be dried as shit and just crumbled and probably not much for flavor left in there. But 
It was the last of it, right? You had to save it. Yeah. You know what? I I was just mentioning, uh, I was showing the last of like, right, my bam, and I had it in this big ass jar here, and someone was mentioned, right? Don't store that shit with all that air. So a downsize. So the rest of it went into that little itty bitty container. And I I need to start remembering to do that. Right. We're trying to be connoisseurs, damn it. We gotta treat our smoke like we like we love it. <laughs> yeah, I gotta do this now. I really don't. <laughs> I've been holding on to that last nugget of the Nepalese for forever, probably at least a couple months, and broke broke down, smoked half of it the other day. No blunt, but saving the other half, I think, for the other. Did you mix it in with anything else just to just to get that kick, or, or did you go did you go straight with that one? I actually mixed it in with a little bit left of the uh, watermelon skittles. Hey, I got a kind of smoke stuff that my wife can smoke during the day, but that's it make her non-functioning and then also i just you know it's a it's a pretty nice vibe and the net added to anything with that cdg and stuff in there it's just a real good real good uh functioning high where you're high but you can do anything so is that nepalese uh naturally high occurring with the cbg uh but that specific plant is i don't know if like all nepalese plants in general do anything like that uh, but the the one you're rolling a nice high. What uh, do you know how uh, high in, in just percentage wise in the CBG it was? Some of the people that ran tests on it in Oregon, it was testing like 28% THC and 5% uh, CBG. Damn, a pretty high number for it. It's a, it's some really nice smoke. I mean, everybody that I've ever hooked up with flower, it's just like that's you know, it's really nice smoke. So, Hell yeah, it's my it's my favorite. I can't you know, not smoke it. So it's tough. And it mixes well with everything. So it makes it even better. Oh, that name, you know, the Nepalese region's famous for, you know, ash and plants with that yeah. heavy hitting stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff. I got, you know, to be honest, I've never even hashed her. I just smoke it as flour. <laughs> There's hash heads around you going, ooh, Nepalese, eh? Run that, run it. So, so what? Uh, would yeah, sir, can't talk. What, what do you got coming up uh, next in line here uh, for projects? Wise, it's getting to be summertime ish. People are starting to think of what we might be doing outdoors and stuff like that. I imagine you got something coming up. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's pretty much summer here. We got about one week till summer's full blast. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I got my uh, Hindi gas pack uh, project that uh, came down and well, it's been down for about a month. Anymore. Um, but really stoked on all those sauces and want to just really dig into all those. Um, the Hindu, the Hindu gas pack that I made, uh, I wasn't really intending to have, uh, like any focus on resin when it came to that line, but man, the plants that came out of it, about half of them are pretty good mirrors of the mom, the 86 Hindu Kush, and then the other half are like a really nice split between them and the I-95 and just the resin on it. It's really nice gritty sandy heads that come off on your hands and just turn into silly screen. So, you know, I'm pretty stoked on those and uh all the crosses that I made with those. Just the pretty Hindu dominant crosses, you know, between like Master Kush, Bubba, uh maybe use like the Hindu Skittles and then a couple other close similar ones like the uh Barberville Purple Kiss, the Gasset Purple Hindu Kiss. Um uh, Urkel, and then like the Panda Pure Kiss. So, really stoked on all those crosses. And also like Papaya. So, really, really stoked on all those. And want to get good into them ASAP. I actually almost didn't even do the, the seed project. I was just going to do some flour for a while, but I was like, man, if I had to shut down or something, I would absolutely want to have all those crosses and seeds in my pocket. So, it happened. So it happened, <laughs> right? Was that, it's, you look at me and you go, all right, there's no way that can leave. Yeah. yeah. My daughter actually is the one, too, that's like, is really strict on like some of the crosses that we make. She's like, I don't want you to let that one out. Keep that one back. <laughs> like, that's the one we're going to do for whenever I can smoke first or whenever, you know, when we're trying to hook <laughs> somebody up. That's what we we'll use. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got the kid running the garden, huh? <laughs> I love it. Uh, what is uh 
what 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 are the ones uh that you're probably just gonna fucking really just uh like What's the one that uh, probably besides the Nepali, right? You said the Nepali is kind of always the one, but what else? What's that second one? Like if you have that secondary profile, you have your main, what's your secondary? That's like the other one that's just right up almost on that same level for you. OG gas. Just OG so, gas. Yeah. I mean, like I had that Mary OG and it's just, man, it's some killer smoke. It just hits so hard and it's just OG in your face all day. And then, uh, this lemon lime that I've been smoking on, it's some killer shit. It's, uh, it's got a really good, uh, diesel fuel to it with some lemon limes on the back end. It's just really good smoke. And then, uh, I've shown some pictures of it, but her sister plant's called Lime Fanta. And it's got a lot more OG, OG gas kind of profile to it with, a, with some like creamy candy lime on it. So I'm really stoked to bring that one down in a couple of days too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when it came to like that, that old school or, or something like that, I've got a, uh, that I'm going to be running to, to give it a look, see what, see what, um, see what it's all about. But I've got some, uh, Ghost Walker OG, which is, you know, just, uh, Ghost OG by Skywalker, you know, and, and, uh, like a well, like it's, it's crossed, you know, well into some shit, but way down the line. And I'm just hoping kind of like you said, man, just, crazy og is all i'm looking for right i just want janky fucking funk get out the tomato cages <laughs> <laughs> i'm hoping not to have to do that man we're gonna we're gonna look for some structure in these things and hope to pass that along hey if, if the weight makes it go i mean mary will mary will bend over she won't quite flop flop but you know, <laughs> fucking nugs get big and heavy yeah, that that is a good point, man. I mean, sometimes it doesn't matter. You know, the only one that will stand will be that center one. Yeah. Well, some of them, I, I'll just, you know, put one bamboo stake and like you said, we're set. But with some of those other cheese, man, it's like I, I just like the tomato cage and don't ever have to look at it again. <laughs> just know they're good. Just let it get It's going to flop where it flops and you're just going to let that happen. As long as it doesn't touch the soil, we get Yeah. <laughs> Have a couple yeah, of players to flop out. Yeah, man, that's how you, that's how you get fucking light to the lowers, man. You just let the uppers flop over. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they open up the insides, get some more more big chunky buds in the middle. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It. It's like scrogging without the screen, right? It's yeah. like more natural. <laughs> oh, and that's right. That's right. You're you're giving layers of fuckery <laughs> to play around with and get micro climbing. And yeah, well, it's organic beautiful. scrogging. Organic scrogging. <laughs> so, what do you what do you have for fucking like? Uh, is there anything uh, that you really like want to make? Like when it comes down to like you haven't started it yet. It's something that's been on the back burner, like on your mind for years, and it's one that you're just looking for like the right shit. Do you have anything like that on your list? Uh, I mean, at this point, I think I've really started everything that I really like dying to start. I mean, yeah. um, like I'm, I'm always really stoked to keep diving into my piece of that software. Um, but I'd say like the one project that I haven't really started that I've really been looking forward to for well over a year at least is, uh, I've kind of been hushed about it, but it's doing my first Gemini's like a work project and going to, uh, be reversing the light doing some fun fun, fun, fun coffee and stuff like that uh, and, and, I, and, you, and you said with the white yeah nice so on my page today i posted up a nice uh, fire og clone so we're definitely redoing some wi-fi you know things yeah that'll be a fun one thing i'm sure that's all oh yeah dude yeah all the old ones. I mean, those things were killer. The white Urkel, white Romulan, white Master. All those crosses back then were super killer. And then, uh, so just kind of keeping some of that stuff around. And ultimately, it's really just for my, my C vault. But I mean, I bet it's stuff that everybody else would love to run too. So and that's what I've done with most of my projects anyways. It's, it's my art and my fun and what I do. And then I, mean, I just make it accessible for everybody else. So. Really, really stoked on making the change and kind of getting my hands out of all that. Oh, it sounds like super fun one. 
Do you ever do any of your breeding projects with other people of mine? Or are you strictly just like, I'm making medicine for me, maybe your missus, and, and that's it. And if it hits for others, then awesome. But, you know, it's not. Or are you just kind of go through and like, yeah, this works for me, works for my old lady or whatever. And But, you know, I wonder what the public thinks sort of thing too as well. I mean, with my males, I probably do more uh, of what, I would consider for my selections and stuff like that. But when it comes to like my moms and clones and making crosses and stuff like that, uh, I definitely like to consider everybody else and what people like to buy. You know, those people got all sorts of different tastes and shit. So I always try and throw in a couple different cookies or gelato or something like that that people ask. And I'll definitely put up polls and stuff with like different uh, options and ask people which ones they would prefer and stuff like that too. So I definitely try and get their voices into the project. And I figured out, I, I remember to turn on the chat this time. <laughs> That's well, how we're I'm rolling doing. in there. They, they're always good. Uh, I've seen, uh, I was scrolling through the Instagram, sorry, the key lime pie. Mm -hmm. It was. That looks pretty good. Man. Yeah, it's, it's in fire smoke. It's, uh, it, uh, yeah, I just had some lime stuff yeah. from a friend. It's not uh, my favorite profile, but it was damn good, though. Yeah, the key lime pie has like a real nice kind of like doughy kind of, uh, I don't want to really say cheesy cheesy, but it's almost kind of there. It's just that creamy lime on there, man. It's so good. You know, unicorn smoke way more than you really want to. <laughs> like, keep going. Load another bowl. Do yeah. <clears throat> Got a few choice nugs that I've been saving too. But like I said, I got one that's about four days dry and so it's done. <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to a good outdoor season this year. It's uh, it's a torturous introduction to it because it's been such a mild winter, but it's not time to play yet. So it's like, uh. yeah, <laughs> itching to go. Yeah, I just gotta wait, wait and stare at the window for a bit more. Yeah. See, just, yeah. just go hard, get them out there, and you know, <laughs> either it'll be amazing or it won't. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I probably should test a few out there just to see how hard you really are. But, uh, you know, keep my main run for lined up and ready for when the weather gets good. I mean, usually veg plants can handle quite a bit more than, you know, your plants and stuff like that. Mm. Might, might want to ease them into it. But. <laughs> I've seen them take everything except freezing solid. Once they freeze solid, they still... Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. don't like that. Okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty much the one thing I've noticed. Like I've I've woke up with two inches of fucking snow on the plants, no big deal, you know. Uh, but right, I've never woke up to one that was covered in ice that lived. No, <laughs> never once. You might I just you're like, oh, we'll see it thaw, you know, it'll be all right. Then. Yeah, yeah, it's all standing there, all frozen and shit. And you're like, you're gonna be fine, right? And the second that shit thaws, it's like fucking dead. Yeah, <laughs> rotten already. So I had one I put outside and uh, just a couple days ago, there were some bugs on it. I didn't want it in the room, so out you go. And uh, in the morning, I went to check on it to see if it was alive, like see because it got cold that night, and uh, the pot was rock solid. Was it? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a bad one. <laughs> just walk back inside. I'm like, yeah, that, works <laughs> that one won't be joining us again. <laughs> Not not via the under the lights, anyways. At least you got all the bugs killed, though. <laughs> yeah, nothing was alive. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Bullshit! You bring that stem, and I guarantee you oh, a yeah. thrift shows up to ruin yeah, your fucking day. Frozen little buggers. Oh yeah, they would. <laughs> right. Yeah. Purpose yeah. I remember one point in time getting like I think it was dealing with thrips. It was like minus thirty five outside, and I was just like getting all fat up, so I sprayed like every inch of my fucking grow tent and threw it the fuck outside with minus 35 and it comes back in just fucking completely iced up I'm like well hopefully that worked i don't know if it actually did or not I still had thrips in different areas of the house but uh i yeah. felt like i was getting some sort of satisfaction out of there that's one of the worst things that i found being down here in this climate with it being so warm to the day it's just the bug population it's just brutal 
Yeah. Thing that we, I like it when it gets a little warm up here because I'm up near the Great Lakes in Canada. So <clears throat> when it gets uh, springtime, we go up and down for a bit. So a lot of things come out and then they just get mashed overnight. <laughs> Freeze. Uh, there, when we were in the Midwest, you know, we get freezers every winter, typically. It was, you know, it was nice because it took everything in bed. But down here, we, uh, you know, we don't, we don't really get freezers. So the bugs go hard. Just bad. Yeah. That's that's what I'm already worried about this year. We did not have a fucking winter. Like we took a nice, you know, spring drive up when you know there should be a fairly bug free drive. Came back and it's like we need a major car wash, right? We did the job of trying to wipe out the winter bugs on a fucking drive. You know, they just they did not go anywhere this year. None of them got cold. Like this year, I am worried like how the bug population is going to look. Like, yeah. At least here, like in the Midwest anyway. I'm to the point where I've just been spraying sulfur over my whole property almost. <laughs> and sulfur got, the fuck? Yeah, I mean, we got a pretty good amount of uh, nice blackberry patch and then growing like tobacco and peppers and tomatoes. So, I mean, russets and things like that happen naturally anyway. So. We're definitely, I'm definitely just always smacking everything with sulfur now. Fucking night. You know, you don't just walk around with like a duster and just fucking throw fucking sulfur dust everywhere. Just poof it fucking all over the place, man. It might be, you know, might be a little bit more effective in some areas than fogging it. I'm, I'm a big fan of the dust. Uh, I, th- I think the fucking, you know, the dust works really fucking well. It's just the, right. the problem is the second it gets wet, you got to reapply yeah. So, dude, I was gonna. So I was gonna ask, man. We were talking earlier before the show, and I've got the the Hawaiian Romulan up there, and I've got the Romulan by the Gak Melon. Yeah. Now you were talking about that one. Uh, I'm I'm stoked to run through a bunch of that shit. Um, now, now me personally, and I think it's the. Uh, Oh, geez, where was it? The fucking cherry pie kush. Uh, the shishkaberry cherry pie kush. That one, I'm super fucking stoked to see what's up with. It's, well, what what can I expect out of that one? Man, I mean, a lot of people like that shishkaberry for uh, for extracts and stuff like that. And it's a, it's a really fun one to smoke anyway. I mean, it's some real good giggly weed that'll uh, it'll put you to sleep shortly after. So with the cherry yeah. pie fish, it kind of keeps it a little bit more alert. It's not quite as puts you under. And there's definitely a good mix of uh, resin profiles on the cyclones. You know, some of them are pretty greasy. And then some of them still have a really nice candy profile that's really good for extracting. But Very nice. Lots of Very nice. cherry. And it's definitely shit that'll get you real high. Not, <laughs> not stuff that you might want to be like, running a grader or something I work with. <laughs> so it sounds like it's right up my fucking alley. Yeah. Maybe if you're running a shovel. Yeah. That's yeah, uh, fucking so, sounds like my perfect fuck. And, and, and you're saying, so uh, you can get the candy profiles pretty heavy out of it. Uh, I imagine with uh, like the cherry pie, cause you, yeah, you, you would probably get that kind of that funky, that licorice you know, that, that thing that comes off of that. It's what, what I kind of get off that one sometimes. Yeah, it's kind of like a really just like a deep uh, cherry, kind of doughy. Um, on the actual, like all the moms, there's some really nice variation between some of them. Some of them had a almost like a starburst cherry to them. And some of them had that really deep earthy one. I had one mom that was uh, really nice, had some good OG, uh, like almost cheesiness to her with that. And it, she had a really nice resin profile. But most of the cherry pie cakes are pretty juicy. Um, and then yeah, some of some of them definitely have a really good nice sweet note to them. Where you can kind of get that kind of starburst candy flavor to them, and they just they hit you right in the forehead instantly. <laughs> nice. I like. I, I hope I find one of those. I've been I've been looking for a long time for like a, a cherry that super obnoxious cherry candy, like cherry sucker, dum dum, starburst, anything like that. That just is obnoxiously like you cannot, you know, uh, 
mess up that that flavor you know and that's the one i'm really looking for so. yeah i like because i get kind of tired of some of the cherry profiles out there with some of the like you know it's all like a cherry cough syrup or that, especially like the metallic cherry i get you know it's fun. I, I, I find that i call that one cherry adjacent um i don't find that to be cherry i find that to be someone's like sad attempt at at fake cherry you know i understand <laughs> so I always, I always hate to call them cherry because that builds an expectation that is not fucking there, you know. Yeah. I agree. But because uh, um, do, do you do you get um now when you talk about like so a lot of people say CBD tastes like cherry. To me, um, you know, it's it's definitely got a distinct profile, and I've always found it to be almost like a red vine, you know, red licorice type thing. And I feel like that's where a lot of people get the idea of like a cherry. They get that and they're like, ooh, that's, that's and it's not what I, you know, never what I think of as cherry, but I definitely get like a red, you know, that licorice, that red, you know, I, I see that part for sure. No, I totally agree. Uh, and I mean, I think, yeah, especially when all the CBD stuff was getting really popular coming out, it was, you know, everything was pretty much cherry. I think now you can get a pretty good variation on CBD stuff, but yeah, it was definitely all cherry dominant, like that, like you said, kind of that licorice, or it had the, the cherry adjacent as you coined to, where it's just, ugh. And, uh, you know, I, I've had some that were really effective, like a good one to one, but it wasn't my favorite smoke, but man, it, it was, it was really effective meds. And I, lo I loved, after I smoked it, but smoking it was like, ah, it's not really my thing. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. But right, the the medicine that it provides is just fucking, like you said, you're glad you smoked it, but you're kind of angry you smoked it at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, it's kind of good, like, it was really good for, like, just going to bed. You know, after a good long day, maybe a little pain, just going to bed, but off and going to bed, so. At that point, it doesn't really matter, anyways. Not like you're trying to go out and like, you know, smoke joints and enjoy the sunshine and throw some turkeys or some shit. Fucking dive into the fucking Pink Floyd anthology. Yeah. <laughs> not not trying to get right for that, you know? Right. <laughs> it's a good time. <laughs> You've been posting up some pretty wicked pics of that uh, fucking Hawaiian Romulan. I know uh, Miss G Bay here is a big fan of the Hawaiian, also. So, or want, wanting to be. Yeah. So he likes her heavies. And tell me a little bit about that uh, the Hawaiian that was used in that cross, because uh, you said that that is a Federation Hawaiian. Yeah, those are okay. really good. I like them. Uh, you know, and we were talking about lemon. There's a really good variation of lemon across all of them. You know, there's sativa dominant, uh, plants. Uh, some of them would have like, there's definitely lemon jack. There's some of the lemon peel. Some had like a, a nice, like, uh, like a lemon pine salt. And then my favorite one was kind of like this lemon tropical fruit that was just really, really good. Um, but you know, you take them really nice, uh, maybe like 12 to 14 weeks. And it was some really good smoke. Uh, you know, you get really high. It wasn't like, it, for me, it wasn't like anything racy or like, or, you know, gets you all paranoid about or anything. Like, like you might want with some sativa style stuff, maybe, but it was really, really dual, mellow sativa smoke. It's kind of, you know, it's, it's up, it's alleviating. It kind of reminds me of like lemon tie. Really good vibe goes with it. That, that's super interesting, man. The Hawaiian, uh, you know, that we'd run is all just kind of that dull yellow tropical fruit. You know, it's a, it's a mango, it's a banana, uh, you know, like a passion fruit type thing. Uh, with a real small little bit of like a, a fuel in the very, very back, right? Like you barely get a hint of it back there. So it's, it's, uh, but lemon, I've never really come across in it. And that would be kind of actually a real nice addition to it. It would add that little bit of a sharpness to it that it would be nice since it is that, you know, like I said, that dull, just let, you know, yellow fruit, the feeling, you know, like you, you would kind of think of if you saw like a banana smoothie or some shit. 
Yeah. And that's how the tropical one was, like how you described it, kind of like a mango uh, banana to it. just a whole medley where it's just, it's easier just to like. Uh, Tropical is all fucking get out, right? And you, you, but that's the hard part. You're like, well, how do I fucking describe it? It's all of it's they're all mixed together, and right. it's like no matter how you smell it, you get a different mixture of all of them, you know, in different ways. So exactly, every time you hit it, it's, you smell it different. You're like, oh, okay, oh no, it's okay. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it was definitely fun. And then you know some of them were really my my favorite profile, but it was definitely fun to hunt. I I would definitely go through a whole bunch of them again. Yeah, for me, it's always been the growth that makes me want to fucking every time I look at it and every time I'm getting ready to prep that plant for flower, I'm like, fuck this goddamn plant, <laughs> dude. It's 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 a giver. It it loves to give little bitty branches everywhere, yeah. every fucking where. So. It's one of those, but once you get her cleaned up and you know how to clean it up, man, I mean, just beautiful chunker, you know, but yeah. if you don't know how to clean it. It will just rock your first grow with a bunch of fucking lard. Yeah. You're happy if you get, you know, without some powdered mildew and shit in there sometimes. <laughs> yeah. 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 She, she's a fucking giver. That's for damn sure. Hey man, that that's part of the fucking beauty of it, though, right? Because uh, yeah. you can get how little or how much you want out of it. You are full, fully in control of the quality that you pull out of that plant. Well, and it's and it's fun just learning the plants. I mean, you know, it's it's never fun looking at things that you fail at. But at the same time, you learn, and then you can run the plant again and again. It's, it's really fun just watching the plants progress under your, you know, as you progress with the plants and. Oftentimes, you know, like the first time you run it, you're not really that wowed by the flower probably either. But if you nail her down the second or third time, you're like, oh, shit, good thing I didn't throw that one away. Yeah. For, for me, it was always like uh, running a Hawaiian's like running a haze. You know what I mean? It's it's a long flowered motherfucker. You got to be on point. Otherwise, you're not going to be impressed with what you see. You'll get a fucking lot of it. It'll all be fucking midi as shit. But, you know. The better, like I said, the better you do, the better, more you learn that plant, the more you trim it, the more you just get get to know it, the more and better that plant will treat you. And it like much like the fucking kind of like the high has, dude, there is no ceiling, man. The, the better you get with that plant, the better it will treat you every fucking time. It's like amazes me after years and years of growing it. You fuck with it. and You're like, all right. But now I was like, how is it getting better? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Fine wine, homie. Fine wine. I know it. I know it. Been with me a long time, and I fucking love that shit. See, I can't wait till I'm at that point where I've actually have strains that I've been holding on to for a dozen years or more. Like, I think the longest I've ever held on to something was like two, three years. Um, and that was back in the married days, so it's been two, three years since I've had any of those cuts. But it's you know, it's like, uh, you know, with this space or, uh, and all, all that stuff like that sometimes. And just always want to phenol hunt gets hard. What's the longest you've ever held on to something for, or just the longest current one you have too. I mean, currently I would have to say, uh, about six years. And, and some of those I had before that I passed to somebody, but I, I lost everything in my move when I moved here. So I had to get some stuff back and people, and, you know, keep collecting and stuff. Luckily, like I said, some of those were backed up with other people, so I got them back and kind of, you know, whether you restart the time or not, but from there forward, it's been about six years. And then uh, some, maybe around two years and stuff like that. So definitely lots of five years and six years. Hell yeah. It's fun. It, you know, the library for me got out of control a bit, so I, I honestly just pulled quite a bit of time. Is is quite hard. Think about. But, you know, I just got thinking about that because uh, I was thinking about your post and one of my old strains. The same thing, man. I had some purple kush. Uh, I don't know where, who, where, why the fuck. You know, it, we've just had it for a long time. It was a beautiful fucking producer. That was easy. Like it was an easy ass plant to grow. Um, but it was one of those ones that it's um, we lost it just as as a group. Uh, the one guy who was out of kind of like the general area who didn't get hit by the ice storm, 
uh, was the only guy who didn't have it. Uh, everybody else who lost power for, you know, weeks on end, fucking, you know, they were sitting on those cuts. Uh, so, you know, we, we lost like the purple cushion and shit and ours wasn't nothing like yours, but you know, it was, it was dear to us, uh, you know, had it for a long fucking time, but uh, you know, I've always, man, that's, that's one thing that's always kind of, uh, how do you deal with your library? <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here just thinking about putting one project together and I got so many goddamn plants in here that I'm like, fuck. Yeah, it's, like it, it's, it's a lot of work. I mean, I, I hand water them all daily and touch every single one. So, you know, it definitely gets to a point where when I'm looking at them and it's taking more and more time and it's like, God, you know, you start realizing, well, I'm, I'm having to do, get more and more water and you're like, okay. So, you know, it definitely comes down to like, looking at some of these plants like man I've, I've had you for three years and flowered you once and it's fun you know but in reality like when you have that many plants and you you know kind of categorize them and compare them to each other you're just like ah gotta go but it's it's tough you know i i started the mental process of it you know several months out and making lists and changing lists and not you know kind of mock going through it just to kind of see what it would look like and finally just going through with the scissors and whacking them but you know it's for me i i do like keeping a lot of moms and just want to really want to focus on really special moms and stuff like that no, nothing that's really high for anything that you know there's a lot of hype even if people don't think it's hype sometimes it's just hype. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm all about the, kind of what works here in the garden for me around here. Uh, you know, stuff that's enjoyed. Uh, those are the things I keep around. Kind of like I said, uh, hype, hype, hype. Uh, it is, you know, what's somebody's hype, somebody else's fucking medicine. You know, uh, I'm a fucking wedding cake guy and I get a lot of shit for it. I'm a gelato guy. You know, I get a lot of shit for that. But uh, those are fucking medicines that work well for me. And uh, I don't give a fuck. Oh, I I will have a beautiful gelato cut, a wedding cake cut. I'll be fucking proud to bang that motherfucker. You know? Hey, wedding cake's fire. Hey, and fucking you, right. I mean, I I like the cookie stuff when I smoke it. For me, it's the, the high's not always my favorite. I like a lot of like a little a little bit more duration to my highs typically. Like the, what comes from the OG stuff, and that's probably just for my background smoking OG all the fucking time. But uh, <laughs> but um, yeah. It's just for the uh, the one thing that I really don't like to fuck with is C99. Man, if I hit that C99 profile, I'm like, <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> I did. There, that might be another unpopular. I'm the same way with GG4, dude. I'm not just not a fucking fan. Like I, I smell it. I'm like, oh, that's it. You know, it's just it does not fucking resonate with me. I, I like GG4, but, you know, it definitely got played out. Uh, I actually was kind of douchey about it for a while. I'm like, if I, the first thing I saw on someone's page was a Gorilla Glue 4, I was like, oh, I'm not following you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, to be honest, you know, after, after 10 years, I finally, uh, brought her back. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it was just always kind of that astringency that that strain has. It was just one, you know, that, that sharpness that it had that I was just, it was never, uh, you know, I like my shit a little more smooth and fucking, ah, man, I guess you would say like robust, you know, if you were kind of thinking of in a tobacco or, or uh, fucking cigar world or something, you know, like my shit, you know, a little a little smoother, more more velvety and fucking robust. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. I mean, we, I never really cared for really all the time just because I, like, I prefer a little bit more OG and stuff like that. And, I always can kind of consider it really like creepy, you know, something you might get like kind of something that's like smoking through or something like that. You get a little bit, a little bit high, but you're not getting too high where you might fall asleep on the couch and ruin the fucking night. Yeah, I don't, I don't find too much of that. That, that gives me this, you know, fucking, I will find <coughs> sativas that will make me feel like my heart's going to fucking jump out of my chest and, you know, I need to go run down the block a few times, but. <laughs> when it comes to that 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 slowdown, man, there's there's not a whole lot of things that'll put my ass like out out. 
Yeah. I think that's just unfortunately, I think my brain chemistry is I like that. And that's what kind of keeps me, me level. So. so. Oh, geez. Usually what I start my days with. So, I mean, I, I kind of function pretty good with myself, but for man, if I really wanted to shut down, it's the sister berry or Urkel. I mean, that's the shit where I wake up and I've got a bowl of it still with half smoke. And I'm like, ah, do I hit it or do I dump it out? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that, that's what makes me get excited to fucking try him again. I'm looking for that kind of shit. Yeah. I love smoking. Yeah. Them. They're cool. Mm-hmm. Luckily, the sister berry grows a lot, a lot quicker than it does. But, man, they're cool. Especially if you get, like, like you were describing with the Hawaiian. I mean, she's not as, as uh, lengthy in her branching, but if you get in there and clean her inner out, she will speed up a little bit. But oh, yeah. She's not OG KD slow. Yeah, she doesn't. The, what, what I'll notice, I mean, uh, I mean, it's been years and years and years since I would have ever saw a young generation of it, <laughs> you know. But um, what it's never uh, lacked to do is is grow fast. Uh, now the thing is, is just once it decides it's got enough light, it grows fast, and then it grows a lot fast again. Yeah, you know, that's definitely solid burst. Yeah, yep, and so. <laughs> but yeah that's uh so that's one like I, I definitely like when i grow my fucking hawaiian that's like uh about a fucking 14 to 16 week strain i make sure i run that bitch long we, we ain't getting nothing fucking too zippy we got a nice lot fucking heavy amber you know <laughs> coverage uh i gotta be careful with mine <laughs> that's how i like to run the top of tie but at 16 weeks, she's not really too amber. It's a, you know, it's a pretty nice cloudy, and it'll, uh, it'll definitely, it's electric. It'll take you in outer space. It, it'll be real smooth. And then, if you want to, if you want to, you know, test people, you can just keep going and going and going. I, I smooth. enjoy sativas when they're not fully amber like more to the cloudy side where you just get that fucking we're in a race car let's go woo uh kind of stuff where you walk into the grocery store and you just kind of start sweating a little bit and realize holy fuck i'm too high for this shit but let's go (laughs) heck yeah we had some good vietnamese black days like that had to peering out the windows Can't, can't sit still, just pacing their house. It's shit, you know, it, it, but the problem is when you get older, man, that fucking shit makes you start going, is that, is that my heart? Am I high? Are we good? Am I, did, did I have a stroke? Yeah. Like, least, you forget how to talk and your heart's fucking racing and you're like, I think I'm having a fucking stroke and it's like, no, it's just good weed, but we're good, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I taste mean, that buzz and it's, uh, sometimes you go a little overboard and you're like, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> Close the windows. Turn the phone off. Yeah. <laughs> I've definitely been pushing, you know, chasing a little bit more mellow stuff. I think like kind of, hey, like, hey Dan. Is, and then just trying to have more just functional, smooth, kind of middle of the road stuff. But, right. That, yeah. That's the thing. It's like, because it, if it goes one way, I'll just fucking sit down. I'll slowly do everything, but I will slowly do everything. Or I'll get the shit that'll just make me not get anything done, but I think I'm getting a lot done really fast. But I'm really just walking around in circles, fucking going, all right, man, let's do this, let's do this, I'm gonna do this, I got this. And it's like fucking hour of me just doing fucking nothing but thinking about shit real fast. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I gotta stay off stuff that makes me wanna just sit down and zone out, because then, you know, I got too much shit to do, like you said, and with two munchkins, and then we just got two puppies, it's like, ugh. I, I don't I don't need something want, making me want to just get stuck uh, because then you know you get grumpy about it like oh, I don't want to just <laughs> I stay in mobile. Uh, so you got to get the lazy ungrumpy weed, man. The yeah. shit that makes you go ah fuck it. Yeah, well they're like I said they're they're new puppies so. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they, you can't have fuck it weed otherwise you just have a fucking house full of shit. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> yep. But they're a black. <laughs> Got two uh two little Alapaha blue bud bulldogs. So they're a nice. They're a hoot. Got a male and a female. 
So they're, uh, they're some stubborn little bullies. Oh, man. Bullies are so fucking fun. Just stubborn as shit. Yeah. I only really ever had a whole lot of uh, interaction with one, and it was my buddies. And it was just funny. Like, every stereotype I had ever heard about him was just bang on fucking accurate. I was like, <laughs> yeah, this boy's real good. He's a, uh, you know, he's a little older. He's like five months and he just wants to make sure he's a good boy 24 seven pretty much. But he gets a little ornery if you're not loving on him and paying attention. They get the zoomies. But the, the female, she's a lot younger. She's a little pretty. So, you know, those little puppies are just tears. Kind of tear your shoelaces and your ankles out and <laughs> might eat you like a velociraptor. Have you guys seen the Instagram videos of that bulldog on a skateboard? I think his name's Chowder or something like that. And it was like, you get the leans in for steering and stuff. I was like, that's cool, man. I, I can barely get my dog to freaking lay down on come out for Pete's sake. So this dog's out there freaking practically on a half pipe. Yeah. They're, uh, they're characters. Right. Uh, you know what? I was kind of thinking about something. So let's see. For for indoor weed, like if you was to say we're going to fucking get a new grower started and we want to fucking push them towards you, what would you say is like the easiest strain that you have to fucking grow? Something that like an idiot could fucking throw in some fucking miracle grow soil, water it accidentally once, and it'd just fucking be happy, you know? Yeah. I'd say uh, for sure, like the Cherry AK-47 UK cheese that we toss to the Irene, those things are super, super easy. And I mean, you get a really heavy yield of some pure burnt rubber gas. So it's, uh, and then some of them, like one of them I just posted up, and dude said it's kind of that burnt rubber gas, but also has some uh, like deep grapefruit kind of citrus to it. So, yeah. Okay. It would be a really nice hit because that citrus stuff. Like that grapefruit profile tends to really hit the forehead pretty quick. So it'd be fun to see how that one turns out for him. But yeah. those are bulletproof, and most of those crosses are pretty bulletproof. Um, so, like, I got like that Kush Mints by Cherry AK 47 by UK Cheese. So that'd be a pretty, like, uh, very beginner friendly type fucking strain, huh? Yeah, super easy. So, yeah, nice, nice. And still gonna grow some fucking. Fire. Oh yeah, I'm out. Those, is some fucking wicked shit in itself. Yeah, I, I love it. And then the uh, the cherry AK forty seven cheese, it has a really nice resin profile for dry stuff. So, you know, it's not really the best for for commercial purposes doing dry stuff. You know, people don't really it's because the people don't want to pay for the time it takes to make really quality dry stuff. But for for your own smoking shit, man, it's amazing. Oh, yeah, so you see this one right here. So, like, uh, what was the story with the RC Cola AK-47? The RC, or, uh, the yeah. RC Cola cut is a cut of Cherry AK-47 that tastes just like RC Cola. I mean, it's it's spot on. I actually, uh, and she, she breeds really well. Uh, there's the, the regular Cherry AK-47 that crops amazingly, but the RC Cola one breeds exceptionally well with the resin heads and stuff like that. Uh, She's a pain in the ass for veg and stuff like that. And she's an old ass fucking plant that just wants to fucking pour out, auto flower, and be done. So I actually just, she's one of the ones that got cold. You know, she, she was the Cherry AK 47 that was made with the chief to make the initial cross. So technically that's a back cross. So I felt like that was good enough to have her kind of locked down. And I've used her in some other crosses. and. But she was an amazing plant for breeding. She passes that resin amazingly. So that cross of the Cherry AK-47 cheese, which, like I said, is basically a back cross, would be a really good hunt for plants. It's just like her, but a lot more, a lot more vigor just to hold in the garden for a while longer without having to bang your head against the wall and constantly work on the lawn. Very nice. Yeah, I think uh, I think recently for some reason, like I started pulling a bunch of shit out, and like the the AK forty seven kept coming out. Like every time I'd be like, "Yeah, fuck it," and I was like, "Oh, fucking, I got this." And you know, it was like this times AK forty. Like as I got to looking, and like everything seemed to me, I was like, 
Well, obviously something was on my mind. I fucking wanted to make hay for some reason. Heck yeah. I mean, it hits good. It smokes good, you know, and, and, it's, and it's usually pretty quick smoke. So it's a nice, it's a nice plant for cropping out. Yeah. The cheese crop, the initial crop is, uh, they often just keep really right around eight weeks or so. So, yeah. Can't complain about that kind of time frame. Yeah, I forget, man, because when I was looking through that through those ones, right, that uh that Cushman's one came up, and then I found like uh I think it was like an Ambrosia by AK forty seven that I had tucked away, and I was like, ooh, mm, I might have to bust that out here soon. Yeah. So, and then another easy one, uh, haven't ran them yet, obviously, but the the Hindu gas bag that I made is what I called it. It's the, 86 Hindu across to the 86 Hindu I-95. Uh, that 86 Hindu is a really nice plant to run, and she finishes in like 53 days. So, you know, the the back cross back here should definitely be a nice quick plant. You say she finished in 53 days? Yeah. Hey, G Bay, 53 days work for you? <laughs> that works. Hey, maybe you should be listening, buddy. It's pretty tight. Oh, I'm listening. That's pretty tight. That's pretty tight. <laughs> Oh yeah, I like the sound yeah. of that. It's that that's where I was gonna get at next, man. What is your fastest finishing motherfucker for some like and, and tough? Just gotta go up to Canada. Yeah, probably something like that, or uh, um, I mean, there's some fast ones in the green crack cross to the red line OG that I made, but still, some of those probably go more like 53 or so. Um, yeah. That's just fucking hard, hard as shit getting them under that without fucking throwing a little rooter Alice in there, ain't it? Yeah. I mean, I've even never, then. Yeah, I've never really focused on getting them, you know, on this sort of time thing, to be honest. Because uh, I honestly, anything that touches my hands pretty much gets ran 70 days for the first time I run it, just to see what it looks like and watch the resin heads go. Because, like, you know, with some of those sativa ones, too, you, you watch the resin heads go clear and then cloudy and clear and cloudy and clear. And then, so if you're chopping them the first time they start to go cloudy, you, you might be missing a whole bunch of windows. But, so. Oh, yeah. I, I remember watching, uh, I believe it was like my Band-Aid Haze. After 120 days, you know, at like day 70, you could have looked at that bitch and been like, all right, man, fucking let her rip. Yeah. Yeah, she was only halfway done. I mean, you'd have lost fucking three quarters of a pound by pulling that bitch, you know, indefinitely would not have had the quality of smoke. Cause you know, it was fairly meh, you know, turf wise at 70 days. But you know, once you got to past 90, I mean, you couldn't, the carbon filter couldn't touch that fucker. It was, it was letting everybody know it was around, you know? Yeah. And man, I can't like, to be honest, that long, long stuff is really, I don't really have the patience for it. I, I, I love to smoke it, but I got a homie that really loves to grow that shit. So whenever I get seeds or something like that, I'm like, here, bro, I can't wait to try it. <laughs> well, I was all about it for a time. I'm like, right, if you go to fuck flowers, do the book, just throw it in the corner. So everyone's like, oh, yeah, here's some haze. Here's some haze. And I'm like, sweet, sweet. And I was running. Now I'm fucking, I'm kind of sick of haze right now. <laughs> you know? I, I I was running it for a very. I'm sitting there looking at these motherfuckers in the corner of the tent for you know half a year. I'm like, oh, oh. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Sometimes you just get sick seeing them. Yeah, I mean, I used to run perpetual once upon a time, and now I really just like getting those hard resets, uh, just cleaning everything really hard and you know, starting fresh every run. But like you said, you get tired of seeing some of those plants just hanging out, <laughs> and you're like. You know, just even pulling them out and cleaning it, it's still, it's still like putting them back in. You're like, ah, it's still it gets harder and harder every time that thing comes out of the tent for it to go back in, man. Yeah, and you get tired of moving it. You're like, oh, uh -huh. you don't snap the, snap the stock. And oh, yeah, especially when you got those big old donkers on there, man, and it's just precariously just flopping all over the place, and you're like, I don't know. You don't make it through this move. I ain't going to be mad. <laughs> They're taller than the tent door or the, the door of the room. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you're you're definitely just shoving it, right? You're working it in. Work. Damn it. Where's Jay? Jay, you better not be listening. Oh, he's he ain't talking about it. I know. He got it. It's, it's coming. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. When your plant looks like it caught a fish sometimes it's in the fan, it's just like <laughs> you're like oh. <laughs> I had one man, that fucking haze bud. It grew up, it grew up, it grew up, and you could see when it grew into the fan because it started growing like this. So oh. it was like it was <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it. It just took a fucking left turn at some point. Got hit like <laughs> one morning it was just this was happening. Yeah, I got some uh Tom McCormick original haze. A friend of mine did a uh, open pollination with, so I got a grip of those. Ah, I'm scared to pop them. It's weird wow. because I got tents that run continually. No problem putting any we any amount of week of flowering plant in there, but yeah, and it's gonna get to week ten or twelve, and I'm gonna screw it up and I end up wasting all that time and space and energy. I mean, they're not. It's not that bad. I mean, if you, you usually those hazes, if you feed them pretty good beforehand. And then just kind of coasting through with some compost seeds and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm gonna pop my sativa cherry here and grow another one. It was one of my first indoor plants. Was a big sativa, and I did that one wrong, and it kind of ruined everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, you were you were about that shit. Do you want them long running motherfuckers? Forgot. You want them hazes? No, I don't know. Ah. Uh, okay. Just try to pawn them off on you. No, like I say, my buddy ah. gave me a big grip of them. I got about 50 of them, probably. And I'm just like, every time I look at them, I'm like, I really want to smoke you, but that's three months away. Or four, four months, whatever. By the time I pop it and get it, you know. Yeah. But I, worth it. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I, I can't do that. <laughs> so worth it. Yeah. I should have grown one over the summer by itself in there with nothing else. Yeah. I like messing with like the NL5 stuff. So that's you know a little more tamed down and a little beefier for my my liking. But I, said, I, I really like smoking the sativa. Just I like the faster pace. Yeah, it's my jam, but it's yeah the growing of it's a little difficult. So I'm settling with hybrids that do do the trick. But uh, see, so it's 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 funny. It's I I, I love how. It's Ford and Chevy, you know, like when it comes to growing, everybody gets in their own little niches of, I like to grow this, I like to grow that. And then you get other people that just don't care. They just give me some beans and I will pop them kind of thing. It's, it's great. I, I personally, I, I kind of probably more lean towards kind of what G-Bay is saying somewhere in between, but I always like to have some sort of longer flowering thing uh, when possible over here kind of like you guys are saying in the back corner there but you can't take up too much room because other you know small space that i have for in one harvest every six freaking months that's just doesn't cut it <laughs> i'm pretty much where he was saying you know like the 70 day window first crop like i pretty much take everything 70 unless it like is obvious that like 65 that fucker was done you know a week ago i'm like oh shit like you were a fast one you know, everything's going 70 and, you know, it used to be, I fucking took everything 80. I mean, I kind of backed off on that because, you know, starting to get a little stupid, starting to, <laughs> you know, it's getting a little too slow. Uh, but yeah, uh, 70 seems to be really, uh, most strains that I've run across are really knock it out of the park right at 70 fucking, you know, right in between 65 to 70, yeah. you know, and that's like you said for me like that's why i like to run around that time frame the first time because i feel like you can really tell right away where you want to take it sooner or not you know nothing like oh shit okay it's just the perfect test spot and then like so i like running like a lot of diesels and stuff too so something around 77 to 84 days isn't too bad for me but anything past that has to be really really planned out yeah, well, yeah, I mean, right. Uh, it got some Romulan and uh, untested genetic, and then one of my, like, tried and trues that usually come out right at, like, 65. And I mean, like, my quality of, like, amber nice done at, like, 65. So for me, that's a pretty fast strain person. Yeah. And then all this kind of other, I've never run, so it'll be fun, you know, adjusting the room, figuring out where everything go. Cause you know, 
some of it's in the same bed together, all of it's in the same room together, but and it's all in beds, but you know, some of it's in the same bed together, you know, that makes it a it's not like, you know, you can move one or something, you know, to to optimize or so yeah, you know, you, you figure out, you know, you, you hope that you don't get one of those ones that at 60 days it's like, yeah, I was done like at fucking 55 and now here's an anner for you, you know, like so, you know, you get fingers crossed shit like this doesn't happen running shit late, you know, that you weren't aware of, but the joys of growing, right? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, if you're in there all the time, hopefully you can kind of catch those. And I do like running some that are like, you know, that'll finish a little faster. Like if I'm in a, a four by four footprint and I have like nine plants, I'll usually do like the, the outside three on each side. They're like, you know, maybe 70, which is 70 day plants. And then the ones in the middle might just be like a, something quick, something more like 58 days or something, you know, so they can kind of come out and then the other ones can still keep keeping up and taking up more and more of the space as they flop. Right. Yeah, that, that's going to be the new thing for the tester 10. I'm trying to keep everything compact, small, uh, get out of the mindset of, you know, what, what could I do with this plant and go with more of like, I just want to see what this plant will do if I go for like absolute quality, right? Like if I was going to grow this thing, fucking four colas, <laughs> you know, we're just going to go with that. It'll be a one timer, you know, and then we'll see if we, we need to keep clones type situation so i need to get into that mindset because i was always kind of like i got to see what the whole plant does at all times right that's the, the the long way to go i like doing it that way i still do but you're never gonna get anything done within any amount of time you know trying it that way so yeah i like to like especially if i'm just trying to see plants i like to just flower them out in three gallons like you said either i might prune a little bit top them or something but sometimes i'll be just not even mess with them just get them in there and see what happens and maybe clone them <laughs> maybe re them maybe just say okay we found a lot of cool ones and we'll just pop more seeds yeah, yeah ho hope that that fucking seed is very fucking you know uh, uh sturdy for you or reliable for you yeah i mean that's kind of the goal is, is someday just be comfortable to the point where i can just say done with the library it's all in c we're just good you know I right see. keep a couple moms maybe you know but so when it comes down time to that i mean you know that's that's kind of like when you got to get into your line breeding right you got to slow shit down you got to get that shit into what like how 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 late is are you getting into when you start to see kind of that stabilization are you talking like an f9 or are you, uh, can you even go towards like an F6 and you can be like, all right, I could throw that fucking clone out because we're good. I mean, I think it kind of depends on really what you are messing with too, you know. Um, you like with the TK back cross work that I'm doing, I mean, I probably want to at least get uh, back cross three done before I get rid of, if you want to get rid of TK clone, you know, that'd be a tough one to throw out anyway. But then again, uh, tricolor tush and the TK back cross stuff is coming out with a, a really nice resin profile that does wash really well and comes out hella OG gas. So, it's like, ah, uh, you know, it's, so like I said, it's just kind of dependent. I think some things might take a lot, lot longer to lock things down and get specific traits locked down. So. Yeah, so he, he, Really, you're just gonna fucking kind of wait until you've popped enough beans to where you're comfortable saying, "All right, this is where I'm good." Kind of leaving this at, yeah, and then and then let her go. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really quick to cold plants, especially the the older moms and stuff like that. You know, like, it's hard for me to do at this moment. <laughs> so, it's, but hell yeah, you get kind of sentimental with some of that shit. Yeah, and if and if not, that's the ones that you know it's a lot easier to let them go. If I can look at it and not feel at it at all, then I'm like, oh, okay, we can definitely let that one slide. Yeah, that's another thing, right? You look at it and you're like, and at any given time, if I look at that plant and I'm like, yeah, you can go, but fuck, you don't stand a chance. You, I might as well have just signed your death warrant right then and there because that means 
the second I find something better, your ass is gone. Yeah. It doesn't matter how fucking fire or how fucking hype that stuff is, man. Yeah, the this, this second kind of that mindset there, man, it's gone. Don't don't ever become mad. Yeah. That's the good thing about fucking pheno hunting, though, right? You're always on the hunt for something better than what you got now. Like, even if you got stuff that checks all five boxes for you or maybe even more than that you know but uh sometimes it's someone will just check it a little bit better than that last one it's freaking you know no two are the same it's just the combinations fuck it's you know it's amazing what's your favorite part about actually do the breeding process uh i mean honestly probably running the seed and the outcome and just getting to see the plants grow I really like vegging the plants out. I mean, I could just veg, 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 and grow more seedlings and just veg them out and get other people to flower them out if I could, you know, guarantee I could get really cool flower back. <laughs> but otherwise, I mean, yeah, that's my favorite part is just popping the seeds that come to work and watching them grow, seeing how they, you know, looking for markers so I can kind of identify and see how they relate to different plants. And then, like, they, and from that you get to smoke it so yeah, yeah. you get to find shit better and like you said sticking more boxes and that that was the idea i thought we were all trying to make the plant better you know for some people now it's about just making names and brands and shit like that but you know there's, oh, yeah. there's good shit out there Blood, yeah, yeah, good stuff. Like, well the black widow hawaiians i'm running right now well i was running the window side because i had some bugs on them i couldn't get off um one is literally blank has no smell zero like even with like rubbing and stuff and the other one wicked smell like really 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 strong so i got clones on them so i've got no issues there but uh that's the true thing like the pheno hunts like if you were just to pop the one seed and you would have popped that silent one yeah like who knows how it smokes i don't know i'll never know but um if you're just going by you know general look at week five week six you're picking the other one you know 10 times out of 10. so yeah you never know and it, the, the one that doesn't smell might put it on the end might not and either way it might be the best shit in the world for you <laughs> so. yeah variations are crazy like when you actually like instead of just growing cannabis plants like if you actually have a garden where some stuff lives a little longer and it's like kind of like you know, you're not on a super tight schedule and some stuff gets to express a little longer or you're just, you know, you're not running a tightest ship kind of thing like me. <laughs> stuff happens and you get to see different things. And yeah, the pheno stuff, pheno hunts are good. I just don't have the space, man, to do a proper one. That's what bugs me. Ten seeds is no pheno hunt. It's a selection at best. <laughs> but that's the problem, right? Uh, you know, to 10 would be fine if you're doing 10 and then you're going to do 10 more of it and then 10 more of it. But if it's something you're already not excited about, then there's no reason doing the under 20 anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, that's. Well, at the same time, I mean, even if, even if it's just 10, I mean, I really don't like popping shit. That if I can't find winners in less than 10 feet, I don't even want to run the feet. So, I mean. I, I'm kind of the same way, man. You got to yeah, like uh, fucking, yeah, the general 10 pack rule, right? Uh, and I'm going to pop fucking probably half of it because normally I'm using a six pot tray, right? A, a little six cell fucking garden tray is what I'm normally sprouting out of. Normally I just start six. And if you don't fucking show out in six, which in if you we usually, you know, you got fucking three males, you got three females. So if you don't show out in three at this point, you know, or like I said, if that male does fucking absolutely stand the fuck out, but. Right. I, I kind of give everybody that one in six shot. And then, you know, if there's something there that's like, you got to keep looking, then you get to look through the other ones. And then that that really gets you to where, all right, are you going to buy this shit again? Like, is it worth it? Like, do we need to look more? Yeah. Right, kind of like said, right. You got to do it in 10, man. I mean, with my stuff, though, I, I do like to run like 48 or 96, you know, two full trays. And then I do do hard cold stuff. You know, I'll get them to a certain height, maybe six nodes high or something like that, and then really hard cull them down to like my best thirty out of the whole bunch. And then, yeah, that, that way I'm just seeing a whole bunch of the veg plants because those are the markers that I'm usually looking for to identify, so I can kind of see what mom's popping up or 
you know, if the dad's coming too strong. So you don't always have to wait all the way to flower if you know kind of what you're looking for. And then you know you're kind of going to be on at least on the right track a little bit. This when you're handling the plants a lot too. So it does help. Um, but yeah, at the same time, like especially if I'm buying seeds, like I don't, and I have to run them. Like I don't want to have to run more than 10 to find them. Like I should, like I should be able to run six pack and find them. Like this is 2024 and we're trying to better read. I should be able to find better winners more often, right? I mean, maybe back in the 90s, it's totally understandable to have to run a sit kind of feed and sort through all the trash. But not to say there's not that still, but like I said, with hopefully enough people are actually better in the plant through that process. We can be more confident and just run and sit seed. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's uh, it, you know, and it does get hard though. You know, I've I've been fucking playing around, making some crosses, and I enjoy uh what came out, and I found problems, you know, and it's kind of finding and working out uh fucking what what can be worked, you know, worked with, worked on, you know, what what is is it better or unique enough? Uh, you know, I found one that I that I like. Oh, you know, it. You know, and kind of you got to give that shit to other people, uh, you know, kind of they get a the general consensus. You know, there's definitely shit and stuff that that I've been testing out that, you know, I've got to pull back. You know, there's enough problems in it uh, that I've seen. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm done fucking trying to work on it. it means that right now it gets to be fucking worked on in private for fucking years until I get to hopefully fucking, you know, get that fucking you know, that, that back out, right. The, like you said, the betterment of it. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, but, but yeah, man, absolutely. And right. Uh, I, I think other people, uh, and, and the other thing is getting away from that. I mean, it has really got to be about the effect, you know, it, I, I love pretty weed too, right. It can all be pretty, but uh, fucking when it really comes down time to it, it's all about the fucking smoke report, right? When it's all fucking done. That's what I'm here for. It's the medicine, you know? So, and that's that's where, uh, for me, it, it can be ugly as fuck. I've smoked some ugly ass weed that'll just dumpster you, you know? And to make all your problems go away. Uh, it, but right, it's ugly as fuck. It's a pain in the ass to grow. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's problems. Now we're working on it, right? You can get closer to getting that weed now. That's not a pain in the end, right? But it's uh, sometimes, you know, it's getting back to the joys of pheno hunting again. Or it's like yep. hey, there's a book by your cover or by its cover because he said like just uh, you got the stuff that has like mad sex appeal. Sometimes it's got like little to no terpene content to it, where you smell it. And there's like not much there, or the effects just aren't there, or whatever. You get stuff that just like, no matter how well you trim it, it just looks like larf in a bag. And but you start smoking that, and you're just like the effects are just like put you in the freaking couch or freaking rocket to the moon, wherever you want to go. Yeah, that's like good shit. And usually, you know, it tends to be for me that my experience is probably the more successful running stuff that you know comes out looking a little more rough, you know. And a lot of stuff nowadays is all designed to be sold on the gram now. It's Instagram it's gotta look pretty for Instagram, so it's all kind of got the same relation. But yeah, I mean, I grew up you bought bags for you to get a bag, so you never get a sit with it. Before. You were glad it. You were glad it was weed. You know, sometimes it wasn't weed. Right. <laughs> so, you know, it's. Hey, like I said, man. Sometimes you bought that brick, and there wasn't even there. There was sometimes there was literally some brick in that shit. You know, <laughs> like you said. So you're just glad it was weed. But mm-hmm. right, we ain't. We don't have to fucking settle for that shit anymore. Yeah. We oh, love the, the brick treasure. <laughs> Find all sorts of things: bolts, nuts. Oh, oh fuck yeah! We found. Hey, so we had a question in there, and someone uh, Kingfisher wanted to know about your best turf profiles in your crosses. And I don't know what is considered best, but let's go with what do you think your is your loudest 
Just absolute, just fucking ridiculous one. Oh, man, that's, I mean, there's quite a bit. Uh, for the wildest? I mean, probably like the cherry lime OG across to the little dozy pig. It's just uh, that cherry lime OG. It's super loud, super loud, man. Um, and it's, it's, it's got a real skunky profile to it. I mean, it's the one plant where you could have 200 plants in veg. And if you just start rubbing, you'd be, oh, okay, here she is, found her. <laughs> you know, if you don't find her closer. So, I mean, the skills of the those plants are just coming out uh, super, super loud and really, really productive. Um, that was actually the one that I gave away as freebie. And so all I have left is my personal stock of it, but, uh, someone like Ken probably has the freshest food. See. So it's pretty good there. But aside from that, um, I'd probably say like the cowboy shit stuff. Uh, a lot of those crosses are pretty loud. Pretty nasty with the deeper in the room and the underdog. Um, the Sensi Star one's pretty loud too. And then, I mean, there's a lot of loud turp profiles, but yeah, none of them are like quite as loud as that straight line in the detail. The, the tri cover work is pretty loud. But then, I, I always look for that one, man, when I, when you can pop it open and you can just nose over to it, right? Or, or you pop it open and you're just like, all right, fucking room smells. And then all of a sudden at the whole end of the grow, you realize it was that one plant that made your whole fucking grow smell like that. You know, cause you walk a, my, my last one was like that. I had a very floral pheno in there and every time I fucking, you'd open the room, the whole room just smelled like that one plant. But then when you'd go over to the other ones, you finally get a little, oh, that man, that one smells a little fucking floral with some fucking fruit. And, well, the floral was a fucking this obnoxious son of a bitch over here. It had nothing to do with this fruity one. It just made everything else smell a little fucking floral. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's, what, that's the ones, you know, when I think the turf profiles of being loud, that's what I mean. You know, it's just the nose goes to it. It's everything else kind of gets overshadowed by it. That's the one, man. When you, I'm like, always you're... looking you go in your room and you can kind of smell the various plants all or a bunch of different, but there's that one that you can still smell above and everything else. Yeah. yeah. It's like the only one really. And then once you turn the filter off, like the carbon filter, then all the other ones start kind of stand out a little bit better. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, Kingfisher had a, a cut of the juice box. And if that motherfucker was just, you know, you would unzip the tent and fucking every other flowering plant around here. You couldn't smell anymore. All you smelled was fucking dank ass gassy fucking basement. It was just fucking amazing, you know, just loud as fucking all, you know, the second that tent got open, you know, the second those things could get away from that carbon filter, they jump the fuck out at everybody, you know, and that's, that's what I'm talking about, you know? Yeah. And there's some nasty ones in the Kim D cross the cowboy shit. Um, those are pretty nasty. I like all the, the Kim crosses and stuff like that. They're all pretty. Yeah, you know, spot on for that good old fashioned weed smell that you can't hide from anything. Yeah, you know, with some of the new age stuff, people be, people might not know what they're smelling. They'd be like, "What the fuck is that smell?" But when you're growing some of those Kim crosses and the old Kim cones and shit, you know, somebody who's never smelled weed is like, "You got weed? <laughs> is that what weed is?" <laughs> right i mean definitely uh man what i don't remember what the fuck i was running and, and it had to just be the mix of the room just culminating but you would walk in the fucking house and it just smelled like a gas leak and i searched many a times to find a gas leak because it was that fucking convincing and it was just my room but it was easy to kind of get away with anybody walk in the house He's like, oh, man, no, there's a little leak. We got a guy coming tomorrow. No, I got it. No worries. The fan going. No worries. <laughs> yeah. But, it, I mean, it was just that convincing of a fucking gas smell. I was like, fuck. 
And I mean, you know, got a six inch filter in that room and a four inch over there and eight inch over here. Like we're scrubbing the fuck out of this air. Why does it smell like fucking gas around here? Yeah. Imagine well, natural gas smells off the plants before. Like yeah. it's uh it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you uh you can smell the line. It's like it's weird. <laughs> it's the gas. Most people think about like petro type gas, but that natural gas it's got quite a distinct smell too, and it's it's pretty cool when you can pull it out of a plant. Yeah, I like all the different the different kind of nuances to the gas. I mean I definitely like like the more you know, OG for gas and uh, the fuel stuff. But uh, when we were in Kansas City, we used to run like a bunch of OG gas stuff and shit like that. And now it's a shit where you can't even open up the room without your nose burning a little bit. The sinus is opening up. But I couldn't even cover that shit up. Even with carbon filters, we had fucking, you know, you can come out the front door and like smell it riding up the foundation. Where I just had to like bite the bull and it was like, all right, I guess I was just gonna smoke 24 7. So we're not hiding the smoking, <laughs> peeping out the pores of the concrete, <laughs> <laughs> just right, it was right, right up the foundation for some reason, right by the whole front where people walk in. And it's just, uh, you can smell it as soon as you open the door, not from the outside, but as soon as you open the door, you smell it, like, and as soon as you go past it, you do it. So. So we just keep something burning. We just keep smoking. Someone's coming over. We're gonna smoke some weed. Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's a tough one. As far as for meds, I definitely would say ten D. Uh, as far as like if I'm gonna fuck around and like go hiking, or mess around for two or anything, I would say ten four. And I've, I've always said if I could only have one pin cut at all, it would probably be the Corey cut of Stardust. It tends to kind of have the potency of the 91. You have that kind of stunky vibe of the uh, four. And you still have that kind of medicinal effect of the B. So it just, as a four round plant, like I said, if I had to get rid of all the Ken plants and just have one, it would definitely be Corey that I cut. But otherwise, it'd be a tough pick between four and B. What's your guys? You guys like to grow the Tams? I can't say I've gotten a hold of too much of it. Um, I don't mind Cami, you know, anything Cami, uh, but can't particularly say that I have a favorite, unfortunately. Need more experience. I got some beans caribou sent me, so I'm getting ready. Like I like it's fluff knows me well that I don't really smoke too much of the heavier stuff the you know chems kind of stuff or whatever I'm way more of a sativa guy but don't get me wrong like I do it's just not my it's not my every joint kind of thing but uh, I'm waiting on them to get those going I've been running way too much light stuff for a while so it's time for a, a knockout one yeah I like the Kim B for eating man like. Sometimes I don't I don't really like to eat a lot of sometimes, you know, and shit and cutting with the restroom and shit and just my own mental shit. I just don't always focus on food, but you get some chem and you're gonna fucking you know, I had some cancer patients and shit. Chem, 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 chem dog from Humboldt Seed Organization back in the day. That was like the first fuel type stuff I'd ever had and that was kinda what set me on that path now and i've ever always been looking for something like that ever since i'm kind of fall into the gba fluff category where i i just don't have enough experience but it is i know i like and always looking but the closest i've found to that is uh catahoula from skunk va and that's triangle kush crossed with uh chem 91 bx3 mm -hmm. and i've been growing that for about a year and a half now and i just i, I love that stuff yeah, I ran the I ran his double trusses. I think is what ended up is the Kid ninety one BX three that he kept out of those. Um, it was it's a really good fire stuff. And I actually just lost them on early on and had a yeah. invasion like four or five years ago. But it was good smoke. Yeah, I, I ran some uh, or no, I'm about to run some San Fernando Valley OGs from Family Tree Seeds. That uh, pretty excited about those. He was 
speaking pretty highly of that. So we'll see. It's one of those odds. Like that's I think that's my favorite thing to hunt out. I mean, you find stuff that's good, uh, stuff that comes close. But I'd say the Catahoula and the Chemdog are the two that are up there for me right now. Yeah. Hey, do you remember what it was you sent me for those those crosses, the caribou, the chem ones? Uh, yeah, I think it was Twin Peaks, chem, which is chem by Chem 91 BX2. Yeah. That's, yeah, I just about guaranteed there'd be something really cool in there. Yeah, hell yeah. No, I'm looking forward to it because, you know, like, sometimes when you go off to you're venturing around, you get a lot of like, I don't know, not leafier stuff, but just you get a lot of different variation in bud structures and formations, and just the way things come together. So it's be nice to go back and yeah, well, that's the kind of hula right here. I've been trimming on it slowly over the night. Mm -hmm. Part of my reason why I'm kind of a little bit distracted, trying to not do like full on trim jail in the middle of a show, but you know, trim for a few minutes. And like, <laughs> does anyone mm -hmm. notice I'm not paying attention? We're busy trimming. Yeah, there, there's one that kind of uh, gets me interested. So when you're kind of breeding some for a lot of this stuff, um, are you even worried about how any of it would do production? Are you ever, is it ever even a thought or is this 100% like, it's all focused on how the flower is coming out in the end and the whole, I mean, yeah, you know, you always want it to look nice and everything, but if it doesn't, you really don't give two shit. Uh, you know, where, where's your stance on that one? I mean, I really, I really don't focus on, on looks too much or, or yields. And I'd like to have it all obviously. Uh, but you know, yields is always something I feel like you can kind of beef up in the room somehow, somewhere. Like, effects and and getting the right January profile and token profile is definitely something a little bit more I think nuanced and something that has to be kind of focused on first, at least from my experience to kind of walk down before I want to focus on like years or five or something like that. And sometimes you get lucky it all comes right away. You know? And right. It's easy to see and you just kind of keep rocking with it. So I mean yeah. I don't I do a lot of Skittle stuff and shit like that, so I'm not expecting it to be like the next, the next fucking heavyweight king or anything. But you know, we're looking for some cool walkers and shit, and kind of increase some biomass for sure to try and get those numbers up too. Right, like like you said, mate. At any given point, whatever you're touching, if you're doing work to it, doing something that makes it slightly better. In any which way, shape, or form, whether it gets a little frost here, a little more potent, a little turf here, a little more weight, but as long as we don't dip towards the negative. So, yep. Hear that, man. I don't know, man. My, my next one, like I said, I want to do the, the playing with the OGs. Uh, got a golden goat I want to play with. Uh, I always find that uh, that's one that, uh, never really struck me as a great structured plant you know uh, i can get weight out of it without a problem but the the nug structure is you know it's not something that to me was like a you know that's not going to be a dispensary fucking nug you know uh but absolute just 100 percent fantastic medicine uh just wonderful medicine so you know i don't care what it looks like it's getting grown <laughs> yeah well, that it and some of that older older genetics and stuff from back in the 90s and early 2000s and stuff it's just like it'll look great right away but as soon as you start trimming on it and shit like you know you go to take kind of one fucking petiole off and then the nugs start falling apart you can't even hold it the whole bug doesn't stay together anymore and so it's just you know it's just it gets kind of annoying but at the same time some of those Drink a super dank, you know, and get some pretty good, pretty good bad stuff and shit. So it's, it's, it's a catch 22, you know, it's kind of like what we're talking about. You, back then, when you were first getting it, you just got what you got and you were happy. And even today, you know, you'd, you'd be damn happy to get it, some of this shit, like the wrong and shit like that. But like 
trimming it and shit. And that's kind of why I'm a light trimmer, anyways. I don't, I don't think it's good. I, I rub the scissors back and forth and we're done. <laughs> yeah, if, if you want it to look trim, you just let it dry out a little extra. That way, the fucking sugar leaves flick off real nice. Yeah, I mean, I don't want <laughs> to dry or anything, but for sure, I don't. Yeah, for the most part, you know, I leave a lot of sugar leaf on there. It protects the like that. The beds. I don't mind seeing a little bit of them off when I'm processing the beds or rolling or anything. So it's all good. What's I, your thoughts on plants that'll like intersex? Do you just straight get rid of them or will you kind of fuck with it a little bit if it's if you like to smoke enough? Or what's your thoughts on that? I mean, it definitely depends on which strains we're talking about, like cherry pie, you know, cherry pie is dank as fuck. And I tell anybody that's running a cherry pie cross, like, hey man, clean up the lowers, wash bananas, you're probably gonna see some. If you see one here and there, pluck that shit and rock it on and be and it's gonna be awesome, but if you pull down shit, just pull it. But I mean, you know, Tim D is another one of those like so bananas sometimes like for some people and you know, it's just they, they tend to be sterile. So that's funny as fuck. That is literally kind of like the same protocol for, the, and the reason I'm getting ready to like want to pull kind of like my black forest cross back is you have to clean them lowers. Those lowers, you might see a fucking nan or two if you don't. But like I said, you you just pluck that one and it's fine. And it, you know, never comes back. You won't see more. And until about day eighty, <laughs> you know, and then you're gonna fucking see them bitches ripping out of everywhere. But it's, it's all about keeping that fucking plant trimmed up, making sure it's got fucking the right nutrients, too. Uh, you know, if that plant, uh, I don't know if that one's the same, but if the plant doesn't get fed hard enough, it will fucking do the same exact thing. Oh, you know, it just, it, it freaks out when you don't feed it. Yeah, and I mean, just about everything, especially talking about old clones and shit, like just about anything that's super fire, you're... you're you know, you definitely want to clean up the lows and shit. All the OGs, the kittens, any of that shit. You always clean up the lows. I mean, if someone's, if someone shows me a plant and they're complaining about a hermit and there's, and it's not cleaned up like that, I'm like, bro, I mean, that's, that's some fucking 101 level shit. Usually you keep the lows. I got, I got my kids clean up lows. I got to see other people's story feeds of their six year old kids skirting plants for them underneath the trellis and shit. I mean, you got, you got to put in a little bit of work. Clean them up if you want to get the the output, man. It's not just sit back and watch shit fucking fall into your lap. <laughs> not if you want the fucking race car shit and the really fucking high end good shit, you know. And so, I mean, another one is like Mac. I think the Mac One cut is one of those ones that I can, but it's it's a scary one. So I just watch them, and you know, like I said, it's not really a. a uh, something that I'm really overly concerned with. Like I said, I mean, a lot of things are kind of grow or sensitive, honestly. You could run shit a hundred times and give it to somebody else and they fucking get a hurting from it for something. So, there's just so many variables to it when it comes to something like that. Where if, if there's a, a large amount of homes popping up, then obviously, yeah, something's not mixing that. But yeah, I um, experience. I had one, we had her in the fucking breeding tent at one point and I was, I was, this was fire ass shit. Like when I ran it and, uh, about halfway in about fucking two weeks in, uh, I thought I was seeing fucking nice calyx swell and everything. And it was literally just fucking stacked, started growing out of this fucking plant. I was like, holy, I have never seen a plant herm that bad. I was like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. That that was the one that like I've never I think I took pictures of that one uh but I was like Jesus I was like that's fucking some some fuck though like what the fuck happened to that thing yeah. never I mean, starts we out flower and female and finishes in male it's like what the fuck happened there yeah <laughs> I mean, we were always popping a ten backseat like, looking for you know crazy shit and there's definitely some shit that you got to week forward and like cut it cut it cut it kill it all right yeah just just as many fucking nanners as fucking hairs <laughs> and that's half the story of most of the 10 plants anyways but people still fucking want to run them you know <laughs> right it's, it's pant hermed and then 
such and such happened and this happened and such has happened, but people are still fucking running them. I mean, it was week four is a fucking herm of a herm of a herm. So it's, it's, you know, is it worth it? Yeah. Right. I, I think that's really what it, uh, it fucking boils down to. I mean, right. You can, well, you, you take those plants, you take them for fucking years. You, you know, you find those weak points, you fucking work them out. You know, after years and years, you can get it worked out. And is it worth it to keep that plan around? And that's exactly the question to be asked. Because, you know, if you, if, right, for me, you know, the the one that I created and got the same thing, you know, it's, it's I want to make it to where if I gave it to somebody like a new grower, right, I don't want to have to tell them, all right, here's the deal. Clean up the lowers. Here's what a nanner looks like. When you see that little fucker down there, you're going to see two of them. Right over here, probably right over here. I've grown playing a long time. I know, right? Just pick that little fucking thing off. You won't have any more problems, right? I don't want to have to tell them that. I want to be like, here's a seed. Put some water on that shit. Harvest it. Have fun. So, you know, right. I got to pull that one back, do some work to it so that I can give that to people. But that's the thing, right? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to give this shit in. I'm trying to make my medicine. And that's my goal with it, right? So, you know, and that's... um it was a conversation I had with a friend, right? So when you pay your fucking $500 for your fucking six seeds, that's why, uh, because hopefully the idea is you're going to be able to put that in your garden. You're going to get that fire that checks every goddamn box. It's never going to harm, you know, yada, 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 give you the whole sales pitch, right? Because it's been worked. So hopefully they have done their job and they have properly bred it. Like you were saying in the beginning is, that's what. That's why you're paying that money because they had better of fucking work that fucking plan. Yeah, and I like to talk to people. You know, I, I definitely like to have dialogue and communicate with people, and that's kind of finding out what's in their wheelhouse too. Because you know, like you said, I'm not gonna throw a cherry pie back cross pack a pack of cherry pie back cross seed that somebody who's never grown a seed in their life. Like they're not gonna. It's just you know, you're not setting them up with a a win. But there's a lot of better stuff that I have that I could. So. Just knowing what they, what people can and can't handle, and you know, some people get to a point where they like to drive their tourist cars and see what the fuck happens, and don't mind hitting a wall every now and then. Well, I find because right. if they're like, there's there's something to be said for genetics that are just kind of plug and play, where they just go and do their things for you, and they're reliable, or right? you always get something you're happy with. But at the same time, it does get boring at the same time too. <clears throat> and when you got something that so. I could see now that I'm like now that I have been growing for years, I would have no issues growing stuff with uh, you know that'll pop herms on your budge and, and stuff like that. As long as it's not like crazy ridiculous amounts, right? Like, just like you guys are talking about, right? Hey, you gotta shave the legs down low or and watch for that here and there. Uh, I, I can live with that. And if uh, I find most of the friggin' Well, look at chem dogs, for example, right? That's fucking going to whistle off and fucking uh, herm at some point in time on you. So it's just how far you want to push them. Um, yeah, I don't mind week three. Like, week, I feel like, it, you know, that kind of tends to be when some of the little fluffy ones will like throw a little shit here and there. And that's, you know, typically the time where I like to get in there and kind of skirt plants up anyways and kind of clean them all up. So, I mean, if anything's kind of acting funny past week three, then I'm kind of keep a close eye and don't really want to fuck with you. The scissors start getting a little closer and closer to that motherfucker. Like, all right, bitch, keep it up. You, you, you try to scare the plant into fucking acting right. Right. <laughs> Time's valuable. Fucking right. That, that's it, too. And and that, I, I do think that also is when it gets to, uh, you know, the importance of culling you know, the fucking genetics properly and getting the right one, right? Is Don't allow that fucking you know, that, that one that is that questionable, that you're like, I just want to see what it's going to do. Just fucking go ahead. If you have the ability that you don't have to run that thing, don't. Like, just don't let it fucking be that headache for you. I mean, I got shit hanging in my room that I've fucking done the whole, oh, let's just see what it fucking turns into. Uh, yeah. Why? Why did I waste my time, energy, money, effort, like, so much to sit there and look at something ridiculous? Because you know, but I did it. It was an auto, right? It was really wasn't taking anything but a fucking corner up. Uh, 
<laughs> I didn't do shit, but accidentally splash some water on it every once in a while. But right now, it's, it's, I harvested it and it's hanging in my dry room for like three months. Like, I don't even want to fucking put it in anything. <laughs> like, I don't even want to sip it. I'm like, why the fuck is it still there? I don't know. I don't even know why I grew it. Yeah, I feel you. I, you know, I grew autos. The first time I grew autos was like 2015 or something. And they were all super small. And it just, you know, it, it was hard. So I, I, I feel you, man. You throw those things and you look at them. And, and that's also, you know, it comes down to what are you trying to do with them? You know, a lot of the feet out there are so, so universally the same where greenhouse guys are growing it and they're growing a thousand feet. And they, they don't want to see anything cool pop out. They just want to see it be uniform and finish the same. So they can put it in a fucking mylar bag and fucking put it on a shelf. So, you know, then there's, then there's the stuff where you're like, I want to find the next best thing that no one's ever fucking seen. It's going to wow some people. Someone might want to pay exorbitant amounts for it or want to just, you know, something you might want to hoard or share with your friends. It's super special, but you know, you're not going to find that running some generic fucking shit that's going to all come out. Run of the mill, you know, universal across the board. You know, right, that white label shit. Yeah. I mean, I like the whole people like the idea of it. And then once you get a whole grow of it, you're like, yeah, I mean, it's fun, but now I got a whole bunch of smoke that I don't really fucking want to go through at all. Like, I was cool an ounce ago. <laughs> you know, now I got <laughs> 15 more ounces of fucking shit that I don't really want to smoke now. Right? You're like, I can only make so many fucking edibles with this shit. Like, yeah. So much rosin. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I definitely like some, you know, a little variation and looking for some, some special plants. And I don't, I don't mind seeing some, some little wild plants. But honestly, I don't really see too many. I mean, there were some in the cherry pie back stuff, but I, I, you know, it was pretty highly anticipated. Yeah. What's your thoughts on like mutations and stuff like that and variegations in the leaves? Do you do you fuck with them at all, or do you just see that like it's too weird? Get rid of it. I mean, like I use some of it for like markers, like Tim D. Definitely, like in, like breeding, I kind of see we can see what plants are kind of showing some variation. Uh, I think it's something for the most part you can clean it up pretty quickly with some amino acids and calcium and things I can get back there. But it's good. Like my 10 D never throws variegation unless I'm making her starve out to get variegated so I can prove how fast we get healthy again. But uh, there's other things like chocolate tie and stuff that throw like some crazy variegation in the stock that I've been keeping. And uh, so I don't, I don't mind it. I definitely like it for markers and, and seeing those tend to be the ones that are a little bit more racy and electric and they tend to grow out of it anyway. You know, if they're, if they're mutiny, they'll usually grow out of it after like the third or fourth May. But if it's just like a variegation in a leaf, you know, it's a little different. But at the same time, I don't really care about either way. So I, they're cool to see and pop up and definitely looking for some cool unique things. I like not, not something you would uh, per se ever start a line trying to kind of stabilize any kind of weird mutation. No, no, like I'm not going to be out there messing with that Australian bathroom cannabis or whatever it is. <laughs> that's not my gig. There you go. All right, yeah, that's a. Yeah, I, I am kind of like a. I really do. Uh, in, in more just for me for fun. I want to get like a stabilized a very variegated stabilized like when you think of like buying a monstera and you get some of these crazy fucking beautiful variegations yeah. i know you can see them and those types are fairly rare but i would love to just get a hold of that and kind of just get that fucking worked in man make that a thing where you get because i do just you know, sometimes uh, I would like to be able to just grow something like that, you know, like as a small little house plant, right? Beautiful fucking, you know, some contrast to the lead, not just, uh, you know, what it is. You can, it makes another market where cannabis can move uh, and be appreciated. You know what I mean? Uh, 
Uh, it's uh, and and I just have a fascination with the morphology of the leaves too. Uh, you know, I I think uh, like you said, they're great markers to look for to try to see if that's a uh, uh, you know like a stable uh, uh, genetic marker. You know, I found. Um, I mean, it, it kind of goes across the board a little bit, honestly. But like with, when it comes to cannabis, like with the chocolate tie, if the variegation keeps persisting like really crazy all the way up into the nugs like i have found that sometimes it can kind of affect the yield somewhat and then also uh like in peppers people really like to chase that variegation with the peppers and it's kind of cool with them but they have a really have a really big impact on the yields as well and the fruit production so when it comes to like just foliage like with stuff like hosses and stuff it definitely seems to be something that can be you know just go wild with it and keep every different cool one and, and Right, but say much like even when you get some, you can get some fire rosin that doesn't press well. You know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. you know this is, yeah, this this would right. It's it's not going to be something you're going to grow for weight. It's not going to be say you know, it's just beauty. You know, it's literally a fucking flower at that point to just be for me. You know, if I had one like that, if it turned out to be awesome smoke and you just need shit weight out of it, it'd be something that I'd grow for fun, show everybody take a whole lot of fucking pretty pictures of and then smoked a little bit that it gave me, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. good shit. And that's the thing is like, yeah. like with the chocolate tie, the ones that have the variegation, but it doesn't like, they kind of grow out of it and they might just throw it like in the leaves. They're, they're killer, like super killer. And even the ones that have it into the buds are still, are still really good smoke, but uh, you know, it's just a little noticeable. So with uh, like with that line, particular, like, you know, you you probably would want to select towards the ones where they just have it in the foliage and not going into the uh, right. But it's still cool, like you said, to see it and stuff like that. Uh, it's kind of like when you have the uh, I don't know if you ever have with the LEDs getting the the white tops on the flower tops. That's what they oh yeah, I burned the piss out of some plants before. In that Arctic top, where people think it's <laughs> oh, all that's yeah. resin, and you're like, nah, it's not gonna smoke good. Yeah, no, I, I bleached the fuck out of that. That's what that is. <laughs> nah, yeah, I've done that. Uh, uh, yeah, I couldn't help that one. You know, I was laughing the whole time that you just saw the nug going like this as it grew into the light and just turned more and more white. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. So it's you cool when you're not like actually touching the light and they, you know, they kind of like bleach out and it does look kind of neat, but you, yeah. You're it's not as neat as you wish as you wish it was oh yeah if you had a college kid you'd be like bro i got the fucking good good you know what i'm saying <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah i think like back in the hps days and stuff when you'd like get them growing up into the lights and they're gonna like act full-on burning themselves and stuff like, Shit. Oh, yeah. Smelling it. Yeah. yeah by the time you turn the lights off and your eyes adjust you realize the fucking top of your fucking buds actually brown like, oh fuck oops Yes, that one got crispy. Yeah. I used to run some, uh, a plant called Highway Girl. for the Canadian dude, Triple Crow. And then, uh, man, those motherfuckers, if you weren't watching them, they'd hit the light quick. <laughs> you'd be like, one day, it's like corn. One day they'd be here, and the next day they'd be like, boom, gone. <laughs> like, fuck. Smelling it outside the door. Nah, gotta love it. Yeah. Oh yeah, like that anymore. It's all the LEDs and stuff, and they'll still burn, but not the same. Yeah, well, I mean, that's one of those fun ones, right? Uh, it depends on how much power you throw at them. You check your lights, right? Some of them are made to be a little, put a little higher. You know, you you let your lights grow, or your plants grow into those lights, they're gonna bleach them way fucking quicker. No, yeah. but. But yeah, some of some of a lot of these LEDs, man, they're made to be put so fucking close that yeah, it's almost impossible. You know, you fuck grow them, just, like I said, just grow them right against the the fucking LEDs and don't even give a shit. Plants are just like, all right, cool. Yeah, and some of these plants just grow so much, and I don't like that they move the lights that much either. Oh my fuck, I just want to be yeah. able to maybe move them once, if that. I like the deal, just like kind of have them locked in. Growing. Yeah, I'm 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 a locked in man. I got a ceiling height, and that's where I roll. You you grow up, you get flipped. I hope you grow in here, and you got this far to fucking grow. Otherwise, 
you don't get anymore. Yeah, I know my space. I know where they cherry out in their par, and then we. Yeah, we, we yeah exactly. Oh. oh, it is nice, man. Just to, even if you got a friend, shout out to every friend who lets your other friends borrow their par meters. You guys are the real fucking champions. But get those numbers, man. Get your numbers and know. And man, that shit really can be a fucking real game changer. Yeah, I've never honestly, I've never used a meter. I just kind of dialed it in the, the hard way all the time. But yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I figured out was uh, what I had been doing uh, because I used the same lights for years, right? So I kind of have my own. Like, you're right. Everything grows properly when I do this. And it just turned out that if you read kind of the par schedule for lighting, it just worked out like at full blast at that height, the uh, fucking at soil level, everything just is where it needed to be when it started growing. So everything just stayed at a hundred percent from start to finish and great dummy way to fucking grow. You didn't save any power that way though. I do. I do dim my lights down too. Somewhere. I just don't move them. <laughs> yeah i tried that this round and i'm not mad at this so i got a some of my some of my uh ladies got a little stretchier than i would have normally uh let them get but it really just ended up like that's all shit i was gonna cut off or is getting trimmed anyway it, it doesn't show me uh, the real representation of my node spacing right because i'm not getting that until fuck i'm three and a half, four foot up anyway. So it yeah. didn't mind the fact that my young in the stretch six inches between nodes, it just fucking went faster. Yeah. Um, it, get that initial stretch and frog them out or whatever you're going to do. And, yeah. And, get a couple fucking tops on it real quick. It, yeah. It just worked out nice. So I wasn't mad at it. You know, yeah. a nice way to grow really saved me a little fucking time. Yeah, and I mean that, those are the plants that I like to grow the most, anyways. Is those nice cantilever style plants that just make that one nice solid canopy with all the lowers reach up and you have. Oh, absolutely! I like fucking node six. You just kind of top that shit, and it just perfectly, finally flattens out and kind of rolls up with itself. Ah, oh, that's my favorite. Or you don't have to top it. They just, you know. Oh they, yeah, I had one of those just just last round that did that. I just you kind of like. Yeah, it just topped, like, it didn't even top itself. It had, you can clearly see the central nug, but everything else perfectly caught up. It's yeah. like, wow. Like, That's how that line fancy is that I got from my friend, and then, like, the Nepalese hash plant. If you leave it, they'll all, all those lowers will all grow up, and you'll have a nice, huge canopy. And you can tell the one big main, main nug, but it's like you said, if you were to cut it up, it's, all the other nugs are the same as if you were to cut it off and top it anyway. So yeah. yeah, exactly. The cool part is, man, looking under that, like if it was a seed plant, you know, you look under that, and if you did all the proper cleaning, it's just this perfect fucking skeletal cage of awesomeness. You know, it's like a rib cage or a ladder. You know, it's just, and it just look the, the look on those are just so perfect, man. It's so pleasing to the eye. Oh yeah, and that's that's like like I said, that's my favorite part is just the growing part and watching the veg plants and dialing and just seeing that that perfect growth, you know. It's right. Because like, once you hit flower, it's kind of set it and, and just let it rock out. You know, if you have to do a shit ton of stuff in flower, you, you probably messed up somewhere, or you're just running a really busy routine <laughs> and you don't have to. I've, I've been there. And it's you know, I think we all like to get a little over involved from time to time. <laughs> more so definitely from flower you know like i said week three i get that that little bit of deleafing and clean up the lowers and check the herms and maybe top dressing a little bit and from there i just like to you know check them and take pictures right from that point on i shouldn't have to have a whole lot of fucking issues with you you should just be purdy right maybe pull a leaf here and there yeah put a couple stakes in <laughs> For sure. yeah. I like the veg part though. You know, it's fun playing with the plants and every now and then messing with them. I don't really do any of the main line and stuff like that anymore, but you know, back in the day I used to play with the veg plants. Fucking with the plants. <laughs> one of our, one of, I was gonna say one of our show buddies, Colton, uh, he 
he's on the Tuesday morning show. Talk about well, what I wouldn't call it mainline. <laughs> I don't know. That's complete uh, artwork. He's done with the plant. He's turned into like a a bowl with like pepper plants growing. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. That's cool stuff. I mean, I had a friend who used to do it. He tied knots with the branches yeah. and stuff. And you see people having like statues in their pots where it's like bonsai into it and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's fun. It's cool. You go to people's houses in certain places and they might have something like that sitting in their kitchen window. <laughs> But, yeah. Not all pictures yeah. of the one bonsai where pot pot bonsai where it's like a Bruce Lee action figure or it's fucking he's like got it on like his back or whatever and it's got like roots wrapped around his arms and legs and stuff. It's like fuck that's that's cool. Someone put some thought and effort into that. I, I like it. Yeah, that was awesome. I did see that. It was cool. We're getting to be uh, close to out of time here. Is there anything else you'd like to get out there before we start thinking about wrapping up? Where, like, let people know where they can find you and all that. Find your genetics. Where they can uh, get right, fire. right now, I do everything pretty much, uh, you know, direct from me on Instagram. It's Azard Nation. Uh, I'm probably going to be making, like, a page for my actual brand pretty soon. Like a food and selections page that I'll post up a little bit more flower only content and just repost it on my page and stuff like that. Um, and then I have an email. Uh, it's uh, zombiearmy at live.com. But uh, I'm probably going to be looking at getting a website or something at some point to kind of, you know, with some of the way social media can be kind of stuck to <laughs> try to play by the rules. You know, had a, I had a post taken down today with some bullshit and then, uh, at the same time, they're sponsored ads for for rosin and shit. And you're like, what the fuck? So, you know, people just want their cut. So, definitely got to get the website at some point. But, yeah, hit me up direct and ask all the questions you want in the world. And I love to talk to people and kind of help them figure out what it is they like or what's going to help them out the most. Oh yeah, man. I, I can't wait to get yours fucking popped up. Like I said, I got them. Uh, a lot of guys laugh. They're on, they're on my door, uh, which means they're on their way to fucking being in, in soil. So I can't wait to get some, uh, fucking some up because I'm excited to go through your work. I've been excited since I got them from you. I'm just slow as shit, but, uh, yeah, man, I, I, I appreciate you coming in and, uh, spending your time with us. Thanks a lot, man. Ah, thank you for having me. It was a great time. I, I love sitting down and talking to you guys. Uh, wow. Hell yeah. Do a three-point at some point. Love yeah. nerding out about weed. Yeah. What we do. Yeah. That was oh, more fly on the wall tonight, so I wasn't more involved. But, uh, yeah, love the information, man. And when you go to his page, uh, don't get too distracted by all the pictures, actually. <laughs> you know, it's hard not to. Read, read the writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and hit me up. I always talk to you. Help you figure out what I'm I'm awesome. All right, gang. I guess we'll uh, start wrapping up, shut it down. You know what time it is? Rock and roll and get out of here. And uh, we'll see you all Thursday night. Thanks sure. again, Mike. Great time, brother. Cheers, fam.
We should probably start warning guests about that. We're terrible for it. <laughs> <laughs> but in fairness, we're not 